You're useless. You can't even handle the chores or take care of the kids, let alone pay the alimony. Kyle had finally shown up at the hospital three weeks after my traffic accident, spouting these harsh words without showing any concern for me as I lay there in the hospital bed. At first, I had hoped Kyle came to visit me out of concern, but he proved to be a letdown. I sighed deeply. To be honest, I had already been thinking about getting a divorce. I didn't expect Kyle to bring it up now, but I guess I should be thankful it saved us both some trouble. Fine, I agreed quickly, which surprised Kyle. Little did he know, I was already one step ahead. I wanted to tell him that I knew what he was planning, and I was silently laughing at him in my head. My name is Sarah. I'm a 40-year-old housewife living with my husband, Kyle, and our 7-year-old daughter, Lisa. Kyle and I met during a group blind date and got married when I was 30. He was easy to talk to, and eventually, I fell for him and we started dating. Kyle was charming and the most handsome man at the table when we first met. When he expressed his interest in me, I felt flattered and proud. Kyle was incredibly romantic in our early days. He would surprise me with dessert plates and bouquets at fancy restaurants for my birthdays, take me on trips for our anniversaries, and write heartfelt letters at just the right moments. I felt so lucky to have him and eagerly accepted his marriage proposal, imagining a life full of surprises and excitement even after marriage. But once we were married, things took a turn. Hey Sarah, my dinner isn't ready yet? I've been working all day and you can't even have dinner prepared when I get back? You're so lazy. Once married life began, he started demanding like he was the master of the house and I was supposed to be his caretaker. At first, I was shocked by the change in him. I thought he was just joking. When we were dating, we used to laugh at each other's silly jokes. We imagined a sweet newlywed life where we'd call each other by cute nicknames and stay lovey-dovey even after having kids. But it turned out he wasn't joking at all. He treated me like a servant or something even worse. At first, I would laugh it off, thinking he was joking. But gradually, I realized he was serious. He really saw me as his caretaker, and that was frightening. After we got married, I had to quit my job, and we depended on the money Kyle earned. I was scared that if I didn't do as he said, he might cut me off financially, so I felt trapped. Honestly, Kyle's income wasn't great. I was making more when I was working. Kyle only finished high school and jumped from one job to another. His unstable work history continued, quitting jobs every year or two. It seemed Kyle felt insecure about his background and took out his frustrations on me. I'm sorry I got delayed with some errands, I told him once. Don't make excuses, just hurry up and make it, Kyle replied, sitting down with a cold beer. This had become a common scene, but each time, I sighed and started cooking. My marriage made me miserable, but I managed to get by. The following year, our daughter Lisa was born, and my days became a series of struggles. As expected, Kyle didn't help much with Lisa. However, he would spoil her by buying her candy or toys she wanted. I tried to raise Lisa properly, so I scolded her when needed, which made her cling to Kyle even more. Lisa, you like daddy, don't you? Kyle asked her once. Yeah, daddy is cool, I love daddy, Lisa replied. I knew it, I'm super dad, Kyle said, looking at me smugly. It was frustrating, but I couldn't help feeling glad that Lisa loved her father. I just sighed again. Despite his spoiling her, Kyle never attended any of Lisa's kindergarten events, like sports festivals or recitals. You know there's a parent-child race at Lisa's sports festival. Could you participate? I asked him. Huh? Why me? You're free that day, you do it, he responded. I'm busy with work every day, but the sports festival could be a great time for us to bond as parents. It's on a holiday, so you won't have to work, I said to Kyle. Shut up, we're already close enough. Maybe you should work on your relationship with Lisa. She thinks you're mean, you know. You might want to fix that, Kyle said, laughing as he left for work. Calling himself a super dad, 
yet he never shows up to school events. I was worried that Kyle's habit of being easy on himself but hard on others might influence Lisa. He continued to leave all the housework and childcare to me and was lazy at home. Now Lisa is five years old and ready to start elementary school, but Kyle was still jumping from job to job. He had just quit his factory job last month and moved to a food and beverage company. I'll be working weekends at my new job since it's in the food industry, he said. Looks like we'll hardly see each other then. Can't be helped, it's work, I replied. Honestly, I was relieved because I was tired of Kyle ordering me around on weekends. Now, I wouldn't have to be nagged by him to clean the floor or serve meals quickly. But if Kyle was out on weekends, Lisa would be sad. It's better for kids to spend holidays with the whole family. I have work, so please let Lisa know, Kyle said. I couldn't really argue with Kyle since he was the one bringing in the money. Reluctantly, I went to tell Lisa, I'm sorry, but Daddy won't be able to go out with you on his day off. I thought Lisa would be upset, so I told her with a frown. However, contrary to my expectations, Lisa seemed unconcerned. It's okay, if you're okay with it, then it's fine. You know he's not going to be here on all weekends, right? Daddy has been smelling strange lately, she said. A strange smell? I asked, puzzled. Lisa nodded and went back to her room. What on earth was she talking about? I've been so busy with housework and taking care of our child that I hadn't noticed much about Kyle lately. Our marriage was not like it used to be, and I tried to avoid being around Kyle to keep things calm. The strange smell Lisa mentioned might be from the factory, I thought. Factories often use special solvents, so it made sense that Kyle could come home with a weird smell. If that was the case, the smell would probably go away soon. Kids are really honest, which is what makes them so endearing. Despite what he said, Kyle started leaving the house early in the morning, even on his days off, which was odd. He also left every weekday. If he was working weekends, he should have a day off during the week. He left without saying anything to me, so I couldn't tell if he was going to work or not. I became curious about what he was doing, leaving so early even on his days off. One day, I asked Kyle, you seem to be going out every day off, what are you doing? Kyle looked confused for a moment, then answered in an annoyed tone while scratching his head, I'm working. I go to work voluntarily. Really? but you should take care of yourself or your body won't hold up, I replied. Shut up, don't complain about my job, Kyle snapped back. I didn't understand why he got so angry when he often complained about my housework and child rearing. I didn't believe what Kyle said. There's no way he, who usually avoids trouble, would go to work voluntarily on his days off. I knew this from watching him closely over the years. If he was that passionate about work, he would have stayed at his previous job longer. I also started paying attention to the strange smell that Lisa mentioned. Indeed, Kyle came home with a sweet, strong fragrance. This strange smell was not from the factory. Why hadn't I noticed this before? I blamed myself for being so naive and vowed not to make the same mistake again. From then on, I decided to watch Kyle more carefully especially on weekdays when he said he was going to work. He seemed to wake up an hour earlier than usual and took extra care grooming himself. He appeared to be in a good mood on those days, which varied from week to week, sometimes being on a Monday, sometimes on a Thursday. But it was clear that Kyle was happy on those days when he left the house. I went into his room to look for any clues. I felt like a detective searching a house. Since I always clean Kyle's room, I knew it well and didn't feel bad about snooping around. If Kyle had hidden anything, it would be in a place not easily seen. I searched carefully under the desk and bed. Finally, hidden in a candy tin in the closet, I found a bunch of letters. What were these? All the letters were from the same person, named Patricia. They had been sent through the mail. The oldest letter was from four months ago, and the newest was from yesterday. As I read the letters, I saw phrases like, I regretted when we broke up but now, I really love you, 
and I want to go back to the time when I was with you. It sounded like something a lovesick teenager would say. At first, I thought maybe Kyle's ex-girlfriend was sending these letters on her own, but then I read a line that worried me. I'm glad you like me again. I'm looking forward to our next date. This was from last week. It looked like Kyle was seeing this Patricia today. He was definitely up to something. I took photos of the letters with my smartphone as evidence. I thought about taking the letters, but I didn't want to make Kyle suspicious. Even with these letters, I felt I didn't have enough proof. After thinking it over, I decided to hire a private investigator to check on Kyle. Three weeks later, the investigator gave me the results quickly. He brought photos of Kyle and Patricia close together in the park at night and even a recording of them saying, I love you, to each other. I accepted the facts calmly with solid proof in hand. I went to the municipal office and came back with a divorce form. Now that I knew Kyle was cheating, I had no reason to stay with him. I planned to confront him with the divorce papers the next time something happened. I returned home and let out a deep sigh. I was acting resolved, but honestly, I was heartbroken. I was upset with myself for having married someone as careless as Kyle. I was thinking about resting a bit before making dinner when my phone rang. Hello, yes? Ah, Sarah, do you have time to talk? Yes, what's going on? I was surprised to get a call from my father. He usually doesn't call me. Actually, your mother and I were talking yesterday, and we're thinking about transferring our assets to you soon. Huh? What happened? My father ran a company that sold imported goods to Japanese corporations. I was the daughter of a big company president, but I never told Kyle about this. I thought it would make me sound boastful, especially since Kyle jumped from one job to another. We're getting old and thinking about retiring. We thought about keeping the company going but didn't want to push it onto you, our only daughter, so we've decided to step back. I see. I felt guilty about not taking over the company, but my parents respected my decision and had planned for the future. I was touched by their thoughtfulness. We're thinking of handing over our assets to you. Our total wealth is $17 million, but we're fine with just $3 million. We've decided to give you the remaining $15 million. What? $15 million? I was shocked. That was more money than I could ever imagine earning in my lifetime. Yes, there will probably be inheritance tax, but you'll still have plenty left. You won't have to worry about living expenses for the rest of your life, Dad said. Thank you, I expressed my deepest gratitude to my father and mother, and hung up. Soon, $17 million would be coming my way. With that money, I wouldn't have any worries, even if I divorced Kyle. No offense to him, but he probably couldn't earn that much. I felt relieved and was in a daze for a while. I glanced at the clock, it was 6 p.m. I realized I needed to make dinner and checked the fridge, but there were no groceries left. I got ready to go shopping at the supermarket. My heart was light, but I had also felt a sense of urgency that Kyle might come home soon. As I was hurrying across the last crosswalk to the supermarket, the light turned green. Watch out, someone yelled, but it was too late. My body was already in the air, and then I hit the ground hard. A sharp pain shot through my head, and without understanding what had happened, I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I was lying on a hospital bed. The first thing I saw when I opened my eyes were my parents and Lisa. Sarah, thank goodness, Mom said. Lisa was crying next to me. I gently stroked her head. You were hit by a car and broke both legs. They say it will take five months to fully recover. Five months. I felt dizzy thinking about being out of action for so long. From that day on, I was stuck in a wheelchair. Although the nurses took care of me, I felt frustrated and annoyed because I couldn't use my legs. During my stay in the hospital, my parents and friends visited me. My parents were taking care of Lisa now, since Kyle was always at work. I thought that was better for her. I was glad everyone visited, but Kyle never came. I started to doubt his care, thinking, 
Aren't we husband and wife? However, one weeks after I was hospitalized, Kyle finally showed up. Hey, feeling good? Kyle asked sarcastically. Yes, man, it's a mess at home without me, I replied lightly. Kyle always complained about my housework as soon as he spoke, showing no empathy. I sighed, thinking he would be at least a little worried about me. What can I do? I was in a car accident. I snapped back when Kyle looked at me with disdain and said, You're useless if you can't do housework or take care of the child. That's the worst, and you should pay alimony. He said such horrible things to his hospitalized wife. Initially, I had hoped Kyle came to visit out of concern, but he was still disappointing. I sighed deeply. Honestly, I had been thinking about getting a divorce myself. I hadn't expected Kyle to bring up divorce today, but it saved me the trouble of arguing. Sure, I said, and Kyle looked surprised when I agreed. Unfortunately, I know what you're up to, I wanted to say, laughing inside. Here's a divorce notice. I took out a filled-in divorce form from a bag that my mother had brought and held it in front of Kyle's face. You already had this. Kyle was briefly confused, his eyes wide, but then he took the divorce notice from me and filled in his name and address right there. I felt relieved knowing I wouldn't have to see Kyle's face ever again. I wanted to tell them the feeling was mutual, but I just watched him leave silently. Probably, Kyle will remarry Patricia after the divorce. I don't know what kind of woman Patricia is, but it's sad to think she's going to marry someone as controlling and unpleasant as Kyle. I feel a bit guilty about Lisa, but deciding to leave was something I had thought about a long time ago. I promised myself I would take good care of Lisa. A month after Kyle left, my life was peaceful. The time without my husband nagging me felt like heaven. I was released from the hospital and started physical therapy. I decided to stay at my parents' house until my leg healed. My parents were angry at Kyle when they learned about the divorce, but they stopped pressing the issue when I told them I wanted to forget about him. Lissa doesn't seem lonely even without her father around and is going to elementary school happily. In the end, Lisa also noticed Kyle's domineering behavior and probably doesn't see him as a father anymore. I was convinced that divorcing Kyle was the right decision, but one afternoon, I got a call on my mobile phone. I ignored it when I saw Kyle's name, but the phone kept ringing nonstop. Eventually, I answered the call. Hey Sarah, when are you coming back? Kyle's words made no sense to me, and he sounded like he was about to start yelling. What do you mean, coming back? You were married Patricia, didn't you? I replied. When I mentioned Patricia's name, Kyle sounded surprised and exclaimed, How do you know that? Did you think I didn't know you cheated? That's why I asked for alimony. Yes, that's right. But alimony and child support, I can't pay that. Why do I have to pay alimony anyway? You who never did the housework should be the one to pay, Kyle argued. I was shocked to hear Kyle's argument. I had asked for alimony and child support through a lawyer, but he hadn't paid yet. I knew Kyle didn't have a lot of money, but he should find a way to pay. Yet here he was, saying something ridiculous like I should be the one to pay alimony. I noticed your affair and gathered evidence. Did you see it from the lawyer? It seems that Kyle had already seen the evidence from the detective agency. That would make things easier, but him calling me was ridiculous. I wanted a divorce even before I found out about the affair because you never helped with housework or childcare and you complained all the time. I'm not your housekeeper, you know, but it's good you're married now. You have someone else to look after you. But here's the thing, Patricia can't do housework. Before we got married, she said, leave everything to me. But once we got married, her cooking is terrible and she doesn't clean. I would have been better off with you. Marry me again, after all, you don't have any money, right? Lissa liked me too, didn't she? Kyle said, which annoyed me. What are you talking about? You divorced me and remarried. You're her partner, not my responsibility. And sorry to say, Lisa doesn't like you. And I have money. Don't lie to me. There's no way you have money. You were a housewife, 
You can't live without me. I had no intentions of telling Kyle about the fortune I inherited from my parents, but faced with his aggressive attitude, I had no choice but to reveal it. My parents are the CEOs. Recently, I inherited their assets. It's around $52 million in total, so I can live without working for the rest of my life. I could almost visualize Kyle gaping on the other end of the phone as he heard about this fortune. You're lying. There's no way you have such a huge amount of money. It's true. If you want, I can have my parents tell you. With that, Kyle finally seemed to believe my words and fell silent. Then he suddenly yelled, If it's true, why didn't you tell me? Well, I wanted to tell you, but I knew about your affair and I thought the worst of you, so I thought it didn't matter at that point. I hadn't yet inherited the assets and there was no issue of property distribution. Kyle bit his lip in frustration. He probably never imagined I had such assets. He must be regretting that he should have never divorced me. But I didn't want to suffer his terrible behavior anymore. Can I hang up now? Please pay the alimony properly, reflect on your actions, and never call me again. Goodbye. With that, I hung up the phone. I immediately blocked Kyle's number so he couldn't call anymore. Mom, who were you talking to? Lisa walked into the room and asked curiously. Just a friend, I replied. But Lisa, do you want to go to the amusement park this weekend? Yes, Lisa smiled happily. Seeing her smile reminded me that her happiness was all that mattered to me. A few days later, I heard that Kyle had broken up with his new wife, Patricia. They argued because she wouldn't do housework, and Patricia ended up leaving him. Kyle, having been divorced twice in a short time, would probably find it hard to get married again. I hoped he would stay single for a while to prevent more people from getting hurt. After the divorce, Kyle lost his motivation and quit his job at the restaurant. He would probably find another job, but it might take him some time to get his life back on track. I felt a bit sorry for him, but his problems were his own doing. I blocked his calls so he couldn't ask me for money, and I avoided places where we used to go together. In my life, Kyle had virtually disappeared. Eventually, Kyle paid the alimony but ended up in debt. I don't know how he'll manage, but I hope he learns from his mistakes. I'm still living comfortably at my parents' house. They told us we could stay as long as we like. After my legs fully healed, I started part-time work at a local flower shop. Even though I don't need to work, I find it better to be active and leave the house. I work hard on weekdays and spend weekends having fun with Lisa and my parents. I feel more joy in life than before and want to keep living happily with the people I love. I cherish these happy moments, especially when I see Lisa's smile.